Thanks for watching. This clip was from our live video exclusively on odds.com. To see the whole video, click the link below. Get paid in full. Colts at Titans, five and three. Colts two and two on the road at the Tennessee Titans, six and two, four and one at home. This total opened up at fifty at Bet three sixty five. It's now at forty eight and a half, and that's across the board. Again, we're going to use Bet three sixty five openers, and the lines that we give Bebenek will be from the licensed American books. The lines that I get will be from Bet three sixty five, and the lines that I bet. Uh, Tennessee Titans open up as two and a half point favorites. That's moved down to two. There are some books that are hanging a one right now. Colts coming off a twenty four ten loss. At at home to the Ravens. Colts held the Ravens to punts in their first five possessions. They looked very good. Darius Leonard left for a chunk of that game, and that's when things fell apart for these Colts. Well, that's one part of it. The other part is the Ravens went no huddle. And when no huddle, pass control offense, Colts couldn't slow them down. Colts did hold the league's top rushing attack to its second lowest total of the season. First sub 140-yard game in four weeks, well below their per game average of 178.7. Rivers did not look very good. 25 of 43 for 227 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. Pittman Jr. caught four passes for 56 yards. Zach Pascal caught five passes for 55 yards. And four-time pro bowler T.Y. Hilton was inactive because of a groin injury, but he's looked bad. All year, he's not on the injury report this week. Mo Ali Cox caught three passes for 55 yards, but did not participate in practice yesterday. He's listed as questionable with a knee injury. This is a huge part of this game, Mo Ali Cox, because Pro Bowl tight end Jack Doyle left late in the first half with a concussion. He's listed as doubtful to go this week. Pretty much he's not going to play. That's not 100% confirmed, but it, no one is expecting him to be in the lineup on a short week in the clear concussion protocol. Jordan Wilkins was again the lead running back, taking the bulk of the snaps over Jonathan Taylor. Wilkins ran 11 times for 39 yards. Taylor ran six times for 27 yards. Darius Leonard and linebacker Anthony Walker were injured in the second half. Leonard returned. Neither are on the injury report. Before we get into the Tennessee Titans, let's talk about the Indiana, Indianapolis Colts, who I am leaning towards betting on Thursday night. And I know it's home team or no team but I'm leaning towards back in these Colts. What did you think of their game against the Ravens? And what do you think of their chances here this weekend, Betsy? Um, I, I thought for a large chunks of that game, they played well against the Ravens. I thought, uh, you know, aside from when Darius Leonard was out, as you mentioned, they were neutralizing that, that attack. Uh, I, I really just thought it came down to them not having the firepower to match and catch up once they fell behind. Uh, listen, they're they're a team that has to run the ball and keep the ball out of Philip Rivers' hands. Uh, I believe Dennis Garcia already said he doesn't trust Philip Rivers, especially on a short week. Uh, neither do I, but I don't trust him on a long week. I don't think 14 days rest or four days rest is much different. The guy's got an old noodle of an arm. I, I don't know if I put a ton of stock into that. Uh, if Leonard is healthy, uh, I think I'm leaning Indy as well. And you have to remember, too, last week you were pretty bullish on Tennessee. You were talking about market correction and how they shouldn't have been favored that way. And I stayed off of it for the the very reason that I still believe Tennessee is a good football team. I just – to be honest with you, this is this could be a pick em and I would still struggle with it. I do see some value in Indy in this spot. But as per usual, I boycott Thursday night football. I'm not into it. However, I, I do like your lean, Jimmy. I do like where you're at. I, my gut tells me Indy pulls this one out. The biggest concern, and Dennis Garcia brought it up. I just lit up Gerald Jones' comment. He brought it up as well. The biggest risk, risk, risk here, the biggest concern has to be Philip Rivers. And do you want to trust them on a short week? Let's talk about the Titans here. They snapped their two-game losing streak in a 24-17 window at home over Chicago, up 17-0 after three quarters. Tannehill was just 10 of 21 for 158 yards, two TDs, and zero interceptions. A.J. Brown caught four passes for 101 yards. Again, Corey Davis no-shows. He just no-shows 95% of the games in his career. Derrick Henry ran 21 times for 68 yards. The defense was missing three-time pro bowler Jadavion Clowney with an injured knee. They waived linebacker Vic Beasley and starting quarterback starting cornerback Jonathan Joseph. Now, they picked up Desmond King. He picked up a fumble, ran for 63 yards. He said all the right things uh, this week, and he had to meet the team 
while he was quarantined. So he had to meet the team on an iPad. And uh, I love the way he handled everything. And, and great job picking up that fumble and taking it to the house. Tennessee came in as the NFL's worst on third downs by a big margin, but stopped the Bears on their first nine third downs. They came in allowing opponents to convert 61.8% of their third downs. They held Chicago to 2 of 15 for a 13% rate. That was easily their best of the season. Before we go further, Bebsy, is that the Titans' defense improving or is that the Bears' offense being terrible? Uh, I have to go with Bears' offense being terrible here. But I, I, I said to you, like, they they should – like, Desmond King, I think, makes a difference in that defense. He is a – He's a very underrated player. You don't hear about him too much because he plays for – well, he played for the Chargers. So I think it's marginally that the Tennessee defense is better, but also, man, look, this, this Bears offense is bad. We That's not a secret. We know that. You, you can't put a ton of stock into a defense playing well against a, an offense that's terrible week in and week out. That offense is capable of making bad defenses look better. Now – I don't know if there's a ton of firepower in Indy's offense either. I mean, you can't you can't put any stock into Phillip Rivers, especially on a short week, although I did mention I don't know if there's much of a difference. I, he, he didn't look good on 14 days rest. Four days rest I don't think is going to make much of a difference there. So it really comes down to can they shut down the run game and the short passing game, and your guess is as good as mine there. They don't have a great run defense to begin with. So, uh, again, this is this is me leaning Indy here. Uh, I, I understand that it's home team or no team uh, on Thursday nights, but, man, this is just – this is screaming Indy for me. The Titans get no pass rush. Jay even Clown has been a no-show. They wave Beasley. They sacked Foles three times. Uh, let's talk about this total briefly, Bebsy. If I gave you a free $500 bet on the total sitting at 48 and a half right now, what's your move? I mean, I expect a, a low scoring game again, short week and two teams that are really going to have to feature their run game. So in, in spite of the fact that Tennessee doesn't have a strong defense, this is, this is going to be a, a low scoring affair. I believe. I'm uh, very concerned about backing Philip Rivers. Very concerned about backing Philip Rivers, and yeah, I mean he's. Uh, we we talked about this early on. It's a it's a really tough play to back him at any time. But uh, I like seeing that plus money beside the Colts, and I'm leaning in that direction. I also expect to stay off the total. I find the Titans quite confusing. And it makes me want to uh, stay off the total. And I'm likely going to stay off the total. I mean, we notice what the market has done here. Uh, by the way, uh, Thursday is a beautiful night. Thursday night's a beautiful night in Nashville. And there is a beautiful weather, really. It gets a little cooler, but uh, the weather is nice. Al Cervix says if Foles can put up almost 400 yards, Rivers will go off. C Max says fade Rivers. And Charlie Tripp says don't be scared. It's an unders game. Uh, Melissa Lemmerhurt in the house says like the Colts to keep it low scoring. Short week, both teams run a ton in this spot. That is a good point. That is a good point. What do you think of Melissa saying that um, there's going to be a lot of of moving the ball on the ground. And one thing we know so far about the Colts on the ground is they're not good at, it. they don't run. They don't, they don't break big runs. Does this uh, Rob T saying Foles put up stats in garbage time when the game was done. Uh, let's just put a final bow on this. I'm leaning towards the Colts money line. And I do agree with Melissa is what Melissa saying close enough to uh, make you make a move on the under. Uh, that's literally almost verbatim the thing I just said a minute before that. I said there are two, there are two teams that have to run the ball, and so it's going to be a run-heavy game on a short week, so it screams under to me. Yet you're going to keep off these Thursday nighters. Uh, I, fuck Thursday night football, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. 
But, I, I mean, that would be my play. Dennis Garcia doesn't like it, um, and, and I don't like contradicting Dennis, but uh, I to me this this screams uh, an under here. And Christian Larson with a great stat. Derrick Henry's averaged less than four yards in attempt against top five run defenses. Okay. Uh, so uh, no move here on the Thursday night for Bebsy. And I have some interest on the Colts' money line. 